Today's subject is how to earn an a and Airframe and Power Plant Certificate from the FAA. So stick around. This channel is about working on aircraft and flying those airplanes. So come take a seat and let's go for a flight. <laughs> This certificate affords the holder the privilege to perform and document the work performed on certified aircraft and in some cases experimental aircraft. Additionally, holding an A and P to work on components is helpful, but not always required. Most components are repaired at what's known as a repair station. Repair stations and the people who work there are usually uncertified. Their work is done under the repair station's license and are generally supervised as they do their work. These individuals who supervise in a repair station are either a and or hold a repairman certificate. That repairman certificate is only valid as long as they work at that facility. But this could be a way for those individuals to get the practical experience to qualify and test for their a and I'll explain here. There are three ways or paths to take in order to obtain an FAA issued certificate to legally work on planes unsupervised. I did a full video on how pilots and uncertified people can legally work on planes. The link is right up over here. There are two major prerequisites to becoming an A&P. You must be 18 years of age and able to write and understand English language. To obtain a single license, yes, you can do them separately, you must have 18 months of documented experience or 30 months for both in order to take the tests. I'll go further in depth on these testing processes after we talk about the three paths you can take. The first and most direct way of getting your certificate is to enroll and pass an FAA Part 147 school. These are certified schools through the FAA that have a defined curriculum and will issue a document showing you have satisfied the 1800 hours of participation. You will then provide this to the FAA in order to take and pass the next set of tests. And again, I'll come back to that testing in a bit. The first path is definitely the most popular in becoming an AP, but by no means is the only path. There are still two other options. If you have military experience and working on aircraft that meets the 1830 month requirements, then you may request from the FAA to take the testing process. Yeah, Pain Tower, um, could you stop landing airplanes on the little runway so I can uh, finish filming? Thanks. And finally, the longest and least utilized path is to work and keep a log that other AMPs will sign as supervising your work. Who might the people be to do this? Well, the owners of an aircraft that are directly involved with the maintenance of their aircraft. Or maybe you're a member of a flight club and are becoming involved with the preventative maintenance of those club planes. This is definitely the longest but most affordable way to get that precious experience. Now to the testing process I referred to earlier. First, you need that authorization from the FAA and they don't just let you walk in off the street and let you take their tests. Chances are you wouldn't pass it without some sort of training. But the final test comprises of three types, a written, oral, and practical. The first of these are the written tests, and there are three of these written tests, the general, airframe, and power plant. The general is the first of the tests because it's required for both certificates. If you only qualify for, say, the airframe, you will first take the general and then the airframe written. The general tests are comprised of mostly regulations and procedures. Once you successfully pass these two for a single A or P, or pass all three tests in case for both the A and P, the next test is the oral and practical. Think of these as your check ride if you're a pilot. These tests are administered by the FAA or more likely a representative known as a Designated Mechanical Examiner or a DME. This is the portion where you'll be asked situational questions and your knowledge of aircraft systems. The technical data such as maintenance manuals, advisory circulars, 
by the way, the AC is a ton of information. If you really want to geek out, grab a copy and study it. The practical portion is just that. You will torque, tension, and safety wire just about anything on an airplane. Generally, there isn't a time limit, but you don't have an unlimited amount of time. I would suggest you plan a couple hours for each written test and six to eight hours for your oral and practical or ONP. Now that you have passed all the tests and have a piece of paper saying you're an aircraft mechanic, what's next? Well, can I overhaul an engine, rig flight controls, make modifications to structure, right? Wrong. There are limits to what you can and cannot do. Let's talk about currency requirements first. FAR 6583 Recent experience requirements. A certified mechanic may not exercise the privileges of his certificate and rating unless within the preceding 24 months. The administrator has found that he is able to do that work or has for the last six months served as a mechanic under the certificate rating, technically supervised other mechanics, or supervised in an executive capacity the maintenance and alteration of aircraft. So basically, you have to have worked six months in the period in the last 24 to exercise your ANP privileges. Are you allowed to make major modifications or alterations to aircraft? Not without the proper documentation and a sign off from a specifically rated mechanic known as an inspection authorization or an IA. You will need three years of experience and then apply to the FAA office, allowing you to take the written test. This test will probably be the hardest FAA test you will ever have to take. If you pass, you can sign for annual inspections, major alterations and repairs to aircraft and their components. Other jobs you might consider becoming is an instructor at one of those 147 schools I mentioned earlier. Additionally, you will be marketable at all kinds of places. I had a classmate named P-School who was hired at an amusement park because of all the systems he was trained on, such as hydraulics and electrical. You will be able to work on piston airplanes, jets, and even helicopters and hot air balloons. An a and is a ticket to learn and will provide you career opportunities like no other. If you have any specific questions that I haven't addressed in this video, please leave a comment or DM me on Instagram at Freedom Fixer. And don't forget, coming up this weekend, this Saturday and Sunday, is the Puyallup Expo. So hope to see you there. And may all your wrenching be good wrenching. A better certificate. I think I hear me a plane. There are two major pre 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 pre